Hi, welcome to PR Tech Talk. My name is Peter Ranemur, and in this video, I'm going to talk about ST Microcontroller's latest addition to the microcontroller family, and they name it STM32C0. This is an entry level 32 bit microcontroller for the cost constrained application. And it's also aimed for replacing uh, their 8-bit microcontroller family, uh, which still are available. And uh, so it's not last time buy or anything like that. In fact, in their website, it still have the 10-year longevity badge on it. So uh, it's safe to still use it. The STM32C0 is the lowest cost MCU in their STM32-bit family. It reuses the same platform as from the rest of the STM32 family. It's made on 90 nanometer process and fits with its 48 megahertz Cortex M0 Plus on par with the older STM32 F0 family and just below the STM32 G0 that runs on the same MCU core but on a slightly higher frequency on 64 megahertz. I do not recommend any new designs on their older platform, uh, STM32F0 family, but you would rather take a look at the, the, this new one, the C0 or the G0 family for any entry level designs. Both C0 and the G0 family are pin compatible, uh, making a migration very easy. Uh, where the packages are matching, there are some packages that are matching and on some C0, uh, some smaller versions that it's not available on the G0 family. So the C0 family uh, comes in nine packages from the launch and it options from the smallest wafer level ship scale package in 12 pin version and it's 1.42 by 2.08 millimeters uh, package and the pitch is only 0.35 millimeters. It also comes in a more user-friendly SUIC 8 pin and the TSSOP 20 pin. And also in LQFP, which I assume will be the more popular one, as in the 32 and the 48 pin version. And it also comes with leadless packages in the UFQFPN packages in 20, 28, 32 and finally 48 pin versions. It's designed to minimize external component count. So only one supply pair is needed for the supply rails. Uh, as in the older designs, you might even have three pairs, uh, that is six pins for just sourcing power to the device. It uses also internal clocks on uh, 32 kilohertz, uh, and that is with 5% uh, accuracy, and also a faster one, 48 megahertz at the 1% uh, accuracy. The C0 comes in two subfamilies. The smaller one, the STM32C011, uh, with 6K RAM, and the bigger one, the STM32C031 with 12K RAM. So why should you switch from an 8-bit MCU to a 32-bit family? Well, the price is said to be on par with the 8-bits. Uh, so the price is, is no downside, but you get more RAM, you get better clocks uh, and also better analog uh, peripherals. You get more peripherals as a uh, CRC and even more performance. And not least more smooth transition to a bigger MCU uh, if you need to migrate in the future. There are some potential downsides though. Uh, for instance, the C0 don't offer any eSquare PROM. The eSquare PROM emulation can be used by using software and the footprint for this is approximately 3.6 kilobyte for the driver and that is available free of charge. Also, the C0 is not uh, su uh, supporting 5 volt uh, rails for the supply voltage, uh, but it do have 5 volt compatible I.O. 
Also, there is no automotive qualified uh, STM32. Uh, so if that is required and an 8-bit is enough, then the STM8AF is the one to go with. When it comes to power consumptions, the C0 is lower in many run modes, except the standby halt mode, where the STM8L is still the king. Some considerations also need to be taken on the memory size. The C0 have the option to be used with both low-level layer driver and the HAL driver. The low-level driver is close to the SPL that is used for the STM8, but HAL is using more flash, but is more user-friendly. On the evaluation board, I have the Nucleo uh, C031 C6 board. There is one user LED, and that is uh, connected to PA5, and there is one switch connected to PC13, and it's on the UART as well. Here you have the development board, the Nucleo C031C6, that we will be making a small demo on. Uh, you have the ST-Link activity LED. You have the power indicator, that is the one with a steady LED, uh, light. And you have the blinky one, that is the PA5 output. You have two switches, the black one is reset, and the blue one is the user switch on PC13. So we're going to make a new program, a Blinky program to this board. So we start with using the STM Cube MX, accessing the MCU selector. And I type in the STM32C031, C6, and T6. You see marketing it says coming soon, so it's quite a new one. Uh, and it also says coming, stay tuned, coming soon. But it's just launched. We create a new project. Uh, I'm using the PA5 as a GPIO output. And I right click on it and give it a name. I use LED as name. Fine. Uh, when we come to clock, I can see that uh, we are using the internal 48 megahertz and uh, we get the system clock on 12 megahertz. And if I need it fast, I'm just changing it and it will be updated. On the project manager, I have made a workspace for the C0. So I will call it LED, if I can spell right, LED1. I change the tool change to the STM32 cube IDE and generate the code. The code is successfully generated, so I open the project. I allow the firewall. Here we have the STM32 cube IDE and I'm running a version just say if I let that one go, and I'm using a version 1.10.1. Uh, so the version is crucial. If you have an older version, it might not have support yet for this device. So here we have the project we just uh, set up in the Cube IDE, or the Cube MX. Uh, so we open the project, we go with the core, the source, there we have our main C. So just to, before we do anything, just try to build it. And if you get a lot of errors, you don't have a matching or a, an IDE that is new enough. Uh, so it, I get zero warnings. So this one should be working. So I go down under the while one loop. Uh, we're making a very big program here. Uh, HAL GPIO toggle pin and which port. 
we named it LED so that it's the LED port pin and which pin is it? It's the LED pin. Uh, you can use control space just start typing what you want and control space and then it will autofill the available uh, commands for you. We stop that with a semicolon and then we will use a small delay. And uh, it was blinking on 500 milliseconds to have it any change on it. I will make it much faster so we can actually see that there is a change. That is the total program. It will just loop over and over here, here all the time. So, and we try to build it. We get zero errors, zero warnings. We go with the debug and we see the bug in the windows. Uh, here we see auto start GDB server and stlink GB, GDB server and that need to be downloaded installed on your soft on your uh, PC prior so it's a special uh, install so it's connected waiting for debugger information or connection remember yeah thank you and now I would like to have the picture on the board as well so you see it's indicating it's that is the J-Link activity monitor and the LED has stopped blinking. So to be continuing we run the program and now hopefully you can see that the LED is blinking on a different frequency than prior. Here we end this video. If you liked the, the content please give it a thumbs up and uh, hit the subscribe button and hope to see you in the next video. Stay safe. Bye.